This is episode number 34 of DevOps Paradox with Darren Pope and Victor Farsik. I am Darren. And I am Victor. That was a nice long pause there. That was Yeah, it's I, I've already started thinking about something else. I wasn't listening really to you. Oh, okay. You never listen to me. I don't, but I'm very good at pretending as if I do. Wow. Right, right to the heart. Twisted <laughs> it a little bit more there. That's okay. Um today's episode is about I'm I'm gonna go a little bit wider, all things Docker. That might be too much information, but let's see what we what comes out of this. Because you know, if you've listened to us at all, you know we don't stay on point. So exactly, we stay we stay we stay in the ballpark or maybe in the parking lot of the ballpark, but we don't. Well, that may not be true either. Um, Docker. So let's talk Docker. What what is Docker? <sighs> what is Docker today, or what was Docker? what is? Okay, what is Docker today? <laughs> well, let's let's go both. Why not? I mean, Docker today is a company needs to figure out what they're doing. Uh, because they abandoned their own products. That's my story. Everything that was open source, which was naturally everything, everything that was open to public without really being open source because they were never an open source company was abandoned, received no significant releases and all those things. So if you go and check now Docker Compose and Docker Swarm, there is no movement. There is nothing going on there for years now. So that was abandoned. And then uh, they focused on commercial offering, which was sold now to somebody else. So kind of like they have abandoned developer-focused products they sold enterprise cash cows. So if you ask me what is Docker today, I have no idea. I don't think the Docker itself knows what they're today. They might find out or they might not. But now the problem is more that kind of, and this is now very egoistic, personal type of rumbling is that I keep getting questions. I had a couple of open source projects based on Docker Swarm. I still get, keep getting requests to fix bugs and, and questions. And I abandoned that thing simply because Docker abandoned it. The world abandoned Swarm and, and other tools. And I don't know how to tell people, st stop doing, stop using my product, uh, my projects. Uh, stop reading my books uh, on Docker because that's dead. There, there is no more. There is mo no more Docker ecosystem outside of Kubernetes. Or there shouldn't be. There isn't Docker ecosystem outside Kubernetes just as there isn't mainframe. It will continue living for a long time, but we don't care about it anymore. You waged war. This is a message to Docker. You waged war. You lost. And now message to the people using it, realize that, that that's gone. Ouch. And, and also I get, I get, I get those conversations. I still every once in a while get conversations like, you know, for what I need, Swarm is better than Kubernetes. And that's such a wrong way of thinking. It's kind of like that would, my interpretation of that sentence would be for what I need, Dead, something being dead is better for my use case. So kind of like Swarm is dead. Does, your use case is irrelevant. You're not going to base what you have on something that is dead. That would be necromancy. How many people, though, do we see do that on a daily basis? Less and less. Okay. So Swarm is less and less. I think I think it's becoming almost irrelevant. A uh, few people clinging to it, but that's it. Now, Docker as a binary, for example, to build images, that is still heavily used. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really a challenge to tell people that it's a very bad idea to use it because of security problems, because it cannot run in a container and so on and so forth. So Swan was the first one to die. Compose is still holding somehow. 
Uh, but it I, to... I, I like compose though. I do as well. But imagine this situation. Let's say that your uh, your production system is in Kubernetes and you're a developer, right? You want something simple to run on your laptop and that works. Mm-hmm. On a first loop, you say Docker Compose. That's great. It sounds great. But on a second look, you realize that you're using something completely different than what is running ultimately in your production. So if if your production is going to be deployed with Helm, and Helm is as easy to execute, maybe not to define, but to execute as, um, as Compose, then you're just maintaining twice the same thing and you're getting away, you're producing different results than what will run in production for absolutely no good reason, except that you're used to it. So maybe that use case for Compose is flawed, but there are other use cases for Compose that are good. Give me one. I'm challenging you. Okay. So what if it's a... Okay, that's already going to fail. I already see it in my head. Um, Your voice in my head is already going off. No, (laughs) no, no. Well, that's a good question. Exactly. The the, The only reason you would use it is if you can't get it to Kubernetes. For whatever reason, you're, you're, it, it's it's a sort of like our last episode. You, you've got some stuff that you just need to maintain because it's going to move to something else. That yeah. it sort of falls in that category. But the real question is that something that you cannot get to Kubernetes. Do you think that you will get it to Kubernetes? Yes. Later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then okay. it's, just, it's just timing. It's yeah. That's all it but is. but then if you will get it to Kubernetes later, uh, but and. But you cannot control it right now, but you can control what's running on your laptop. Knowing all that, shouldn't you use Helm? And I'm using Helm or Customize or any of the Kubernetes thingies. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, we, it, do, do you really want to willingly create a technical depth knowing that that's not going to fly in the future? So this gets back to maybe with compose i don't need all right so let's let's say compose against um mini mini cube right is that is that your comparison or no no i would say docker for docker desktop if you're yes. a mac or windows user yeah. runs both docker docker proprietary stuff and kubernetes so mm, that's true you're not changing well, it, right it's going to be docker desktop no matter whether you're doing kubernetes something or compose something well, that's assuming you actually have your operating system upgraded to a point that you can install that version of Docker Desktop. Yeah, I mean it's been years. So if if you're like if you if you cannot install Docker for desktop, just just change profession. Go go work in a supermarket. I don't know something else. So you're, we, telling, me not, go, you're not, telling me to go work at a de- at a grocery store. Right now. How old is your OS? Oh, it's L Cap, so it's three plus years old. Why don't you upgrade it, man? Because I'm. Lazy. What's wrong with you? Because well, I need to do backup. I need to do, I just. Okay. It's, yeah. Exactly. I was harsh. Uh, I mean, first of all, those problems will not disappear over time. It will be just bigger for you. Second, okay, use Minikube. I mean, Minikube is also a single command. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Still better than Compose. Okay, fair enough. I'm not saying better. It's it's not about better. It's about. Uh, if you're starting something new from scratch and stuff like that, why would you use something that is dead, right? It's more convenient. Let's say that it's more convenient. Let's say that it is easier. Let's say that there are there are different things that work in favor of Compose, which I don't agree, but I, I'm going to play play with it. I, I will imagine that. Still, if you know that something is definitely dead, why do you want to spend your time with it? Learn. There is always something that you will need to learn, something that you need to fix. It's the same thing like, I mean, I'm now really going to exaggerate, but if I tell you, uh, if you tell me, okay, for this use case, mainframe, I'm starting something new, and for this use case, mainframe is great, you're still not going to use mainframe, even if you find me a good use case for it, for something new. Right? Simply because you know that there are, that it's that technology. 
Okay, that's the, here's where I'm going to push back a little bit. What if I don't know it's dead technology? I'm telling you. That's why you're listening to me. I'm telling you it's dead. It's like you're dead, just one dead. you're just one voice. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay. Uh, did, did, are we talking about compose, right? Sure, why not? Uh github.com docker compose. Okay, let's take a, I'm going to this is live happening right now. Docker compose. I'm in a project 129 releases. Uh Release candidate uh, made 21 uh, release made 21 year, days ago. No significant features. Yep, no significant features. And then the one before that was done. So now we're talking about releases being done uh, without any significant uh, features and done by a couple of times a year, more or less. Okay. Uh, well, before it was going like crazy. Nobody could follow anymore, right? Right. And now we are in a cosmetic type of releases uh, without anything really significant being added to it. Maybe sometimes something every once in a while, uh, but that's about it. And Compose working with uh, Compose basically working with uh, Docker Swarm. That's the best use case for Compose. I mean, it can work with Docker as well. But. Right. But you, you sort of hit on this earlier. You've got open source projects that people still contact you about that you tell them that it's dead. Yes. But you think about most larger enterprises, most people in an enterprise don't keep up with what's current. That might be an overstatement, but... That's absolutely true. But in big enterprises, generally speaking, the departments that decide what will ultimately be production. So I'm not talking about traditionally developers or testers, right? Usually some operations or architects. They actually, most of them skipped Swarm altogether. And now they're all setting up Kubernetes. Right. So your company roadmap is, is, is in Kubernetes or going towards Kubernetes. And I doubt that you as a person working in that company, you're completely oblivious that your company is at least planning to go to Kubernetes. How likely is that? Probably pretty high. Probably if, 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 I'm a, if I'm a Java developer doing Spring Boot microservices, I probably don't know. Yeah, then, yeah, but okay, I agree. You got me there. You probably don't know. And this is now, we're going to move in a completely different different subject uh, that we already discussed. So you don't know, of course you don't, excellent. Uh, so you know how to write getter setters and that's your job description. Yep, you work for the Jira factory. Yeah, so actually really, if, if that's what's happening, it's completely relevant what you're doing because you don't affect really your company and what the company does and stuff like that. And you're going to continue fighting with the rest of the departments in your company because you're all misaligned. You're all going in seven different directions and you're all in charge for a tiny fraction of a life cycle of your application. That is making that is making 98% of the revenue for the company. Uh, in a very, very um, inefficient yeah. way. Yes. And that's what I'm trying to poke at is the inefficiencies of this. Yes, it's inefficient that I haven't upgraded my MacBook to at least not the latest one. What is the latest one? I don't, I don't even know anymore. I don't know. Or at least in minus one, right? You know, that's that's my fault. But but that's I, I, look that's, at a lot of people that are just now getting off Windows Seven. I mean, that's of course, but kind of like so I. Let's let's see, let's take you as example, right? You have your reasons not to upgrade, right? But you are going there willingly. You know what you're missing, right? And I know it, it, from some yeah. previous of our conversations that we had that I was trying to convince you to use a tool which I'm not going to mention. You said I cannot. Maybe if one day I upgrade, you're you know the pros and cons. You made yeah. the choice. That's okay, yeah. and you live with it. Uh, but then again, probably if you have a really good use case for something, then you're going to upgrade. 
Sure. Uh, my best guess is that you're not upgrading because you still haven't found a good reason for it. But if I, for example, if you start working with Kubernetes locally and you hate Minikube, you want Docker Desktop, you would upgrade. Right. But again, that's easy when I'm an individual doing it. If I am in part of a big machine and they control what I can and cannot do. Now, my choice at that point is do I stay or do I go? Not only that, but then, you know, if, if, if you're... If everything you do is controlled or out of your control, then this conversation is relevant. Irrelevant. We're not talking about whether you, that hypothetical person, should use Docker or Docker Compose or Minikube or Kubernetes. There is not that discussion. You're just doing what you're told. So this discussion is more or less irrelevant, right? If, if you have absolutely no, dis, no decision-making power in any form of way. But what if, well, there is no what if at that point. Because, you know, in those cases that you're telling me, uh, and I know quite a few, you probably don't have root access to your machine. You cannot install Compose anyways. Right. Yeah, that's true. So it's, it's just a sad story, right? Yeah. So to me, Docker is probably the saddest story in, in industry that I can recall right now amazing company brought to the whole industry a lot of advancements changed the way how we think changed the way how we work there would be no container massively used containers today without docker probably uh, and then they failed miserably well okay so let's stay there for a second the you're saying it, it, well whatever the phrasing was that you used but there were containers before docker yeah, massively used. Yeah, but that's the key point. Massively used. Yeah. What? Why? What do you think caused that big change? That shift. Simplicity. It was very, very easy to create containers, and then after that, a lot of new stuff that actually did not exist before were created. But if you try to mess yourself with namespaces in C groups and all those things, it's not easy. It's very hard. And most people, uh, most people are not going to go that deep, right? Most people are not uh, deep into operating systems and all those things that that, that were required before contain Docker. Most people just want to use cool tech for the work that they are doing that is not really directly related with containers or any of those things. So basically, Docker brought it to the masses. You know, kind of. Yeah, I know. industrialized it. Yeah. The, well, what's interesting though, is still talking to some people that are supposedly tech and still have not heard of Docker. Okay. Now, now this is, this is going too far. So if you haven't heard about Docker, then, uh, I, I wish it weren't true. I, I know, but uh, then kind of, there is no hope for you. Absolutely no hope. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just now getting to the point now where pretty much everybody's at least heard of Git. Yeah, but that hypothetical person probably is not listening to this because they gave up after first episode because we were just talking about things that that person never heard before. Yeah. Well, and sort of a, a variant of that is we're talking specifically the tech. People that haven't heard of Phoenix Project, right? The thing's nine years old now. Yeah. And I still run into people that have never even heard the story. And yet they purport to be DevOps practitioners. I think I just threw up a little bit. Um, so it, it's okay that you, if you haven't read Phoenix Project, that's okay. If you haven't been using Docker, that's okay. Or many, many other things that I can continue listing for a long time, right? It's okay if you're not using it or read it or what's not. Never heard of it. That means that you're completely uh, isolated from the rest of the world. And you work in an industry where actually you cannot progress by being isolated. I mean, I, I went to China and they heard about all those things and they have great Chinese firewall that prevents them to get information from outside the world. Yeah. It's, it's, it's still shocking to me 
some of the stuff that I find out that people have never heard of, and it's been years. It's like, oh no, we're just over here. We're we're leading. We're out front leading. I went, you're out front leading what? Um, but another conversation for another day. But I was too harsh. Going back to the real subject. I was too harsh. If you're using Docker, Docker Compose, that's great. Keep using it. Just don't expect that if there are things missing, if you if if you need stuff that is not there already, don't expect it to appear anytime soon. Yeah. We're we're not we're you know, of course we have no dog in this hunt. We don't have any inside information. Well, I don't anyway. So I can say this is you know think of docker as sort of maintenance mode at this point is that yes. okay and, and anything related to docker I, not I, kubernetes but docker so i believe that docker now by by selling their enterprise product i think that they're trying they're going to try to uh give uh extend life of it uh, improve change something they're going to do something but Whatever they're doing, if it has any chance of success, will need to be somehow related with Kubernetes, simply because that's the world we live in. Kubernetes is like a black hole that is attracting everything. And there is no escape from it, uh, for good or bad, right? Um, so I don't know what Docker as a company is going to do, but it will have to be somehow related with Kubernetes ecosystem. Pretty much everything. If, if what you're doing today isn't in some way, shape, or form related to Kubernetes, uh, you might need to find a new job. Yeah. Or, or mean, not. <laughs> or Because then you're going to be doing nothing but maintenance wherever you are. Yeah. I mean, you will be converted into equivalent of mainframe maintainer. Yeah. You're, you're, you're the COBOL maintainer now. Which, unfortunately, though, the COBOL maintainers make a lot of money. Yes. We're not on the, the backside to where you, the non-COBOL people are making lots of money yet. That'll happen probably in, what, 20 years? Something oh, no, because like COBOL will still be getting paid really good in 20 years. I mean, COBOL will exist long after Kubernetes. Uh, uh, nobody even heard about Kubernetes. So it, Kubernetes will die at some moment, and then few generations will change, and nobody will even know that it existed, while mainframe will be running happily uh, still. With code that's been running from the 60s. Yes, it will never die. We gotta get we gotta get some of our friends that are of that age. I'm close to that age, but I, I was just on the outside of it. So I just missed the big parts of it. That'd be an interesting conversation. Yeah. I mean we, we know one person. Yes, both we do. Us. We should invite her. Yes. Of course, that would need to be probably four or five episodes with her. Yes. <laughs> she has lots of stories. That would be a very interesting fireside chat, if you will. Yep. But anyway, all right. So that's actually a good idea. But her schedule, we talk about our schedules. Her schedule is very different. <laughs> oh, but anyway. Um, all right. So Docker, Docker Swarm. Docker Compose. If you're using it, keep using it. It's not going anywhere, right? It's. I mean, it's, the, it, it's, it's, it's today's today. It is the basis of Kubernetes. So it, it's not going anywhere. Can be interpreted if I understand English correctly in, in <laughs> different yes. ways. Yeah, I didn't. So mean it in the it's not going way. anywhere. Like it's going to stay here forever. I wouldn't agree. It's not going anywhere in terms that it's going to stay as is. It's not going to continue evolving then if that's what you meant then i agree i actually meant the first but the latter is true too oh. <laughs> well near near term it's not going anywhere yes for, for both for both statements because kubernetes is currently tightly bound to it yes so all right well if you thought this episode was interesting not you victor because you're the most interesting man on the planet. I don't think so. Yeah, okay. But anyway, uh, leave us a rating or review, preferably on Apple, because most of you are listening on Apple now. We've seen a big shift towards 
Apple products, which is sort of interesting. I've also been noticing that we're doing really great in Estonia, Hong Kong. Um, so we definitely have a stronger European presence, European and, and APAC area. The U.S. people just haven't caught on yet. But is that abnormal? No. It's always the U.S. is slow. Uh, in tech, it's not. Yeah. Well, on the West Coast, it's not. East Coast, yeah, it's slow. But anyway, uh, if you want to contact us for anything, you can go out to devopsparadox.com slash contact. And all of our contact information is there. And if you would like to leave us a voice message or send us an audio complaining that you guys suck. Do we suck the least this week? We're still working yeah. on we're still working on the course. It's coming. They're not right. exceptional, but I can think of quite a few people who are much worse. Okay, I would, I don't even want to do an episode about that. Um, I'm trying to stay positive on this day. Um, so that's it. Coming up next week, it's going to be December 25th. Right now, it's December 18th. We will have a Christmas episode. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but we'll come up with something. Which and then that also means we're going to also have a New Year's Day episode. So if you're listening, to, well, by the time you hear this, we probably will have already recorded it. So, But you can still send us some ideas for New Year's. What do you want? To, what New Year's predictions do you want Victor's comments on? Because oh, yeah, we, be cool. we, we probably won't record New Year's episode until the week of Christmas. So... If you got any questions, you got a few days to get them into us. Head over to the contact page, and you can, uh, or hit the, hit up the Slack channel too. Get a drop us a question over in the podcast channel. Uh, anything else for today? Docker is Docker. Docker is Docker, and it's that. I'm being negative to you, Docker. I like I loved you, but then you disappointed me. But you still like them? No. Oh. No, that's the thing. So uh, th there, there are literally two people that I like in Docker, and uh, around fifty other people that I liked personally. They're they all left. So I identified with the company and people, and people are not there anymore. There's some wisdom in that. For another day. That's the, and that might be the subject. How how important are people for a company? For everybody from a, if most of the people from a company leave, can that company continue being the that same company? Sounds like a good idea. But that doesn't sound that is that doesn't sound very festive. So I don't know that we can do that for <laughs> for Christmas. So anyway. So okay, then then it's your job, Darin, to to come with a jolly subject. I always ruin everybody's morale. Jolly subject. Jolly subject. Okay, that's what I'll do. All right. Thanks to you for listening to episode number thirty-four of DevOps Paradox. <laughs>